The Hadley Telescope is one of the best ways to get into astronomy if you're a maker like me and you're looking for a DIY project. This is my take on the popular design. Say, build stuff. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character building experience. Well, if you'd like to add a little bit more character building, why not build your own telescope? The Hadley, originally designed by Jonathan Kistner, is a 4.5 inch, 900 millimeter focal length, F8 Newtonian reflector telescope that can be built quite cheaply, although mine incorporates a few luxuries. Here is a simplified bill of materials for the project. You can see my total cost was around $600. Most of that cost is in the mount and the carbon fiber tubes that I use for the structure. These are kind of the luxury items that I just mentioned and more about on my justification for those later. But for now, just know that even at $600, this telescope is still pretty comparable to other commercially available options. The $30 mirror set is the primary reason this telescope can be built so cheaply. By comparison, the parabolic mirror set in my 6-inch telescope cost about $200. It turns out for this small size and short focal length telescope that we can get away with using spherical mirrors despite them being optically inferior to parabolic mirrors, hence the cost savings. The CAD design and bill of materials for my version of this telescope are available on my website, designbydave.net, link in the description below. The first change I made was to use 18 millimeter carbon fiber tubes for the structure. I primarily did that because, well, I already had the tubes, but they're also ideal in terms of strength, stiffness, and cosmetics. Printed parts are all printed in my favorite material, 3DX Tex Carbon X Carbon Fiber Reinforced Polycarbonate. Instead of the stock design's embedded nuts for securing the parts to the tubes, I opted to just drill and tap the plastic directly. That's secure enough for this application and is simpler to print and assemble. I opted to purchase this inexpensive commercially available focuser instead of printing one. You can get these on AliExpress for like $12. It's an inexpensive rack and pinion style focuser. And for what it is, it works quite well, especially for a small telescope like this. I recommend going this route, especially if you're just starting out, because this will get you up and running faster and with fewer parts to fiddle with to get a functioning telescope. If I was gonna print my own focuser for this telescope, I would go with a Crayford style focuser like I used on my six inch telescope, and I'll have links to designs for those that you can incorporate. I added a simple dovetail mount so I could use this red dot Finder. These things work really well for finding out where your telescope is pointed and finding objects in the sky, and I think it's an essential upgrade for a telescope like this. There are several really bright lights on the buildings in my apartment complex, so a shroud around the primary mirror is necessary. And it turns out just this simple shroud is enough to pretty much block out all stray light. This is a collimating ring for the primary mirror. Simply drop it onto the primary mirror, do your collimation, and pull it off when you're finished. For supporting the primary mirror cell, don't do what I did here and have screws going in the back this way. If these are over tightened, they can drive into the back and press into the back of the mirror, which would be bad. Instead, embed some hex head screws into the mirror cell with some epoxy and use some nuts or thumb nuts on the back side for tightening and collimating. This is shown on the CAD and also this is how I designed the six inch telescope. I just haven't gotten around to making the changes on here yet. Also, be sure to use somewhat soft springs for supporting the primary mirror cell. I initially used die springs from a 3D printer bed. Those apply too much force and can press into the back of the mirror causing pinched optics, which can cause blurry, distorted images. By far the most impactful change I made was the mount. A telescope is really only as good as the mount it is on. This unfortunately is the least budget-friendly part of the build, but I think it's totally worth it. 
This is the Skywatcher AZ GTI, which is a computerized go-to tracking telescope mount. You align it to the stars, select an object from a catalog, hit go to, the telescope slews to the object and will keep it centered as the Earth rotates. This is especially useful for observing the planets when you're using very high magnification. The object will quickly move through the field of view, requiring you to readjust the telescope manually, which gives very limited time to actually observe the planet. At around $420, this mount is by far the most expensive part of the build, but I think it is totally worth it and an essential part of having an enjoyable astronomy experience. There's a lot of debate about the merits of a manual mount versus a computerized mount. I'll leave that for other astronomy specific videos. Just know my recommendation, computerized go-to mount for sure. So what's it like to actually use this telescope and what can you see? Well, here's some sample images provided by Jonathan. You can see the rings of Saturn, Jupiter and its moons, tons of craters on our moon, as well as deep sky objects like galaxies and nebulae if your skies are dark enough. I've had the opportunity to compare this telescope against my six inch as well as a monster 20 inch telescope under some really dark skies. And well, yeah, the bigger is definitely better. I was really surprised at what this little telescope is capable of. It packs a big punch and is a great bang for your buck. If it's your first astronomy experience, you won't be disappointed. So that's my take on the Hadley Telescope. Reminder that the files are available on my website, designbydave.net, link in the description below. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think, or if you have any questions with your build, I'm happy to help. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.